Hello, lovely people. Welcome to CNN 10, the best 10 minutes in news. I'm Coy Wire, and we are unveiling our winners of hashtag Your Word Wednesday on Wednesday this week. So submit your unique vocabulary word today in the comment section of my most recent post at Coy Wire on social media. We're going to choose one fun winner to work in to tomorrow's show. We begin today by looking at the most recent trend of labor strikes in America. Auto workers, writers, and actors were all part of unions that went on strike. The Writers Guild of America and SAG-AFTRA, which represents film and TV actors, went on strike this summer, making Hollywood hit the pause button on filming. The union auto worker strike was historic. Joe Biden became the first sitting U.S. president to visit workers on a picket line when he joined union auto workers in their ongoing strikes against General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis. The pandemic pushed many people to ponder their careers, their work-life balance, and job demands. Soon, a contract for a whopping 75,000 healthcare workers at Kaiser Permanente facilities will expire. And if they don't reach a labor deal, those workers plan to strike from Wednesday to Saturday. Their main demand is for staffing shortage issues, mainly in hospitals, to be resolved. If not, this could lead to the largest healthcare strike in U.S. history. So, how might this affect all of us? Well, healthcare workers like pharmacists, optometrists, nurses, x-ray techs, about 40% of Kaiser Permanente's staff might be unavailable to patients. They're spread across California, Colorado, Oregon, Washington, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. We're going to keep you posted right here on CNN 10. 10 second trivia. In what city would you find the largest museum in the world? Paris, France, St. Petersburg, Russia, Cairo, Egypt, or New York, New York. If you said Paris, put your hands up. The Louvre in Paris spans nearly 800,000 square feet and houses tens of thousands of pieces of art, including the Mona Lisa. Now we are traveling to France, where there is an invasion of bedbugs. The French government trying to get the bedbug boom in Paris under control. People are completely freaked out, finding themselves in a tempestuous situation. Usually undercover, these bugs are being found on public transport systems, in movie theaters, at the airport. And with Paris hosting the 2024 Olympics in 297 days, city officials are on a mission to get this infestation under control before they welcome people from around the world. More now from our Melissa Bell in Paris, but I have to warn you, if you get queasy kind of easily, you might not want to see these videos you're about to see. A nasty commute. And not just for the passengers you can see. French officials say that bedbugs have infested Paris's transport networks and the wider city. The race is now on to exterminate the bugs with less than a year to go until the Olympics. From metros to high-speed trains, videos have shown them taking over some cinemas and even Charles de Gaulle Airport, which is making for an itchy situation as France prepares to host the rest of the world next summer. French officials are preparing to take measures to contain the scourge with transport operators gathering this week to try to find ways of getting rid of the pests. But that's not enough for some who say the thought of sitting on a bus or a train next to the uninvited seatmates makes their skin crawl. That really traumatized me. I'll keep my luggage closed to prevent them from getting to my home. Also, I'm not from here, so once I get home, I'll have to wash all my clothes. Paris Deputy Mayor Emmanuel Grégoire says that no one is safe from the problem because the bugs can be picked up anywhere. A recent government report estimated that about one in ten French households had had bed bug infestations between 2017 and last year. Though some fumigation companies say business is higher than usual and more urgent. We've had customers calling us up crying, desperate for a solution. And it's very, very costly. When you have to throw away all of your bedding, when you have to undergo works in your apartment. And so you get into a sort of paranoia. And whilst bed bugs may be a growing nuisance in Paris, health experts say that they're not considered dangerous causing merely itching and rashes. And their numbers are increasing not just in the French capital, but around the world, as people travel more and the bugs become more resistant to pesticides. An irritating problem, 
but not one, say French officials, that should pose a threat to the upcoming Olympics. Their plan? To stop the bedbugs biting as soon as they can. Melissa Bell, CNN, Paris. On this show, we try to cover a wide variety of stories, right? And we feature CNN's journalists from around the world here every day. But as part of our Champions for Change series, CNN anchor and correspondent Sarah Seidner recently gave us a unique perspective when she sat down to describe the emotional impact of reporting on conflict from around the world. We'll hear from her now to get a perspective on what it can be like covering some of the toughest, most impactful stories. For me, fear feels like a poison is being injected into my body. Cindy, let's pull back a little bit. Let's pull back just a little bit. Let's just pull back because I'm getting hit by some of the shells. I'm not fearless, but I work past it. I push past it. And that actually makes me feel more powerful. <laughs> this is me. Like, I'm not, I don't have it all together. <laughs> like, I don't want anyone to ever think that I have it all together, although sometimes it looks like that on TV. <laughs> I cover a lot of conflict. Libya, the Arab Spring, Afghanistan, the Mumbai attacks. In the middle of it, when it looks the scariest to the outsider, those are not the times uh, that bring out that anxiety and that fear. When we're out in the open, we have to run. It is literally weeks after I get home. Stop it! Those are the times when it creeps in. There are definitely plenty of us that experience PTSD after some of the things that we see that never leave, by the way. Every now and then I'll get a flash of something. I have some of the most thoughtful, kind colleagues um, that I could ever ask for. People who literally will write me saying, hey, sis, are you okay? Do you, you wanna talk afterwards? Um, those are really important outreach. Why am I tearing up? The, the, that outreach is really um, impactful. Sorry. Get it together. Okay. I've had a lot of colleagues who have reached out and said, are you okay? And sometimes I'm not, and I can actually admit that to them. They have been there, they have done it. And so that's been really, 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 really important. If you find someone that understands, it is a real special relationship. Find your people, as I like to say. Anything that can keep you out of that loop, that what I like to call the doom loop. I usually just take a deep breath in and then I take one last sip of air, so like just, That, that it works for me. Like it, it makes me concentrate on my breath because that last breath is hard. What's at your core? What you love, what you love about yourself. Those are the things that bring you back to reality. Literally time changes everything. Um, it is a cycle and we have to go through it. That is tear gas, let's check. That's part of being human. For today's story, getting a 10 out of 10, let's go to Vegas, baby, to see the highly anticipated Sphere, which made its debut last weekend as an entertainment venue with two concerts by U2. It cost $2.3 billion to build what Madison Square Garden Entertainment calls the world's largest spherical structure. It's 33 stories high, nearly two football fields wide, and is almost completely wrapped by an LED screen. Fans inside described it like being inside a giant spaceship. I wonder if it got really hot inside after the show because all the fans left. Our special shout out today goes to Lee Scott Academy in Auburn, Alabama. Mrs. Cherry Walker, we see you. Every day we have a choice to just keep sleeping on our dreams or we can get up and go get them. Remember, submit those vocab words at Koi Wire on social and put your school, your mascot, and your teacher's name in there too. See you tomorrow, lovely people. Go make it an awesome day.